Hello and welcome, dear friends. You are watching the Iglesia Ni Cristo and the Bible. Now, perhaps, dear friends, you notice that members of the Church of Christ greatly value and cherish their membership in the Church of Christ. Although members of the Church are also affected by the crisis caused by various problems like the pandemic that we are experiencing right now because of COVID-19, they zealously uphold their services and hold worship services at home. And this is because members of the Church of Christ were able to understand the truth recorded in the Bible about the importance of the Church of Christ. Now, although nations in different parts of the world are in lockdown or quarantine, strictly enforcing social distancing and prohibits mass gatherings, members of the Church with the guidance of the Church administration make use of the internet and social media to continue to propagate the truth that they were able to understand which ultimately led them to join the Church of Christ. Just like how Church of Christ members do not allow problems, troubles, and hardships aggravated by calamities and pandemics weaken their faith, in using the internet and social media, they also do not allow themselves to be affected by false beliefs and wrong values that are learned through the internet in social media groups in Facebook or Reddit or from popular social influember, or influencers rather, whom many follow in Instagram or YouTube because these will ruin the certainty of attaining salvation on Judgment Day. That's why we Church of Christ members strive to be aware of all such dangers to our faith so that none of us would lose our divine election but remain in the church until the end and be saved. Now, in light of all of this, our dear viewers and our beloved brethren who are watching us right now, it's important to understand what is the reason why our Lord God called the members into the Church of Christ. Now, to answer that question, we are going to read the testimony of Apostle Paul written here in Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. May you listen to what he says. Now glory be to God, who by His mighty power at work within us is able to do far more than we would ever dare to ask or even dream of, infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, or hopes. May He be given glory forever and ever through endless ages because of His master plan of salvation for the church through Jesus Christ. Now, dear viewers and our beloved brethren, if you noticed, Apostle Paul said, Glory be to God because of His master plan of salvation for the church through Jesus Christ. Now, through this testimony of Apostle Paul, it shows the importance of the Church of Christ because the Church of Christ is the one who will receive salvation and the wonderful blessings that come from the Lord God. However, is it enough that one is just a member of the organization to receive the promised salvation? What stature should those whom the Lord God has called into the Church of Christ reach, and how can they reach such stature? What we are going to read is written here in Ephesians 4.13. May you continue to listen to the testimony of Apostle Paul. This is what we could read. This will continue until we are united by our faith and by our understanding of the Son of God. Then we will be mature just as Christ is, and we will be completely like Him. Now, based on what I read to you, dear viewers and our beloved brethren, it's not enough that one is just a member of the organization to receive salvation. One must be mature just like our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, how can the members of the Church of Christ reach such maturity? Now, earlier I read Ephesians 4.13. Now, we are going to read verses 11 to 12. May you continue to listen, our dear viewers and our beloved brethren. And he appointed some to be apostles, others to be prophets, some to be evangelists, others preachers or teachers. The common object of their labor was to bring the Christians maturity, to prepare them for Christian service and the building up of the Church of Christ. Now, to summarize what we've learned so far, 
the Lord God places those to be saved inside the church of Christ, which is clearly stated by Apostle Paul, for them to be united by one faith and understanding and become mature just as Christ is and be completely like Him. Now, since the church is the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, isn't it only natural that the members of the body of Christ are expected to grow up spiritually, to be like Christ, who is their head? Who was Apostle Paul referring to when he said that God appointed some to be apostles, others to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and others preachers or teachers? If we are going to read the testimony of Apostle Paul in Colossians 1.25, he also taught about God's administration that was given to make God's message fully known. Therefore, the Lord God placed the church administration inside the church of Christ. For what purpose? To teach His words so that the members may be led to spiritual maturity and salvation. Therefore, even during these times when many of us are attending worship services in our homes, we understand that our worship has a vital connection to God's purpose in calling us to be members of the Church of Christ. And it should not be neglected, my dear brethren. That's why the Bible specifically in Hebrews 10.25, as stated by Apostle Paul, that those who neglect such gatherings should be exhorted or reminded to uphold the worship service. That's why there are church officers whom the Lord God has placed to encourage us to worship and move forward to spiritual maturity. And aside from the ministers and church officers, who else have the responsibility in helping build up each member in the body of the Lord Jesus Christ? In fact, if we are going to read what is written here in Ephesians 6 and 4, we can read that parents should train their children in Christian discipline and instruction. That's why all parents are exhorted to unite with the church administration in the campaign to strengthen further the Christian family. And how can we identify the Church of Christ members who unite completely with the church administration in striving for maturity and perfection? According to Apostle Paul, their way of thinking and way of life have been transformed. And we can read that here in Ephesians 4, 20 and 25. But that isn't what you were taught about Jesus Christ. He is the truth, and you heard about Him and learned about Him. You were told that your foolish desires will destroy you and that you must give up your old way of life with all its bad habits. Let the Spirit change your way of thinking and make you into a new person. You were created to be like God, and so you must please Him and be truly holy. We are part of the same body. Stop lying and start telling each other the truth. Now, dear viewers and our dear brethren, according to Apostle Paul, we can identify the members of Christ's body who strive for maturity by their way of thinking and their way of life, which are patterned after the truth about Christ that all members have learned. And what have such members done with their old way of life with all its bad habits? They've given them up. They allow the Lord Jesus Christ's teaching to lead them to change their way of thinking. That's why the church administrator or our executive minister, Brother Eduardo Manalo, has been exhorting Church of Christ members to keep progressing towards spiritual maturity by intensively renewing our lives. Now, what did the apostles warn all Church of Christ members about that could keep them from reaching maturity. What we are going to read this time is stated here in Romans 12, 1 to 2. This is the testimony and teaching of the Bible as stated by Apostle Paul. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you, 
take your everyday ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for Him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what He wants from you, and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. Now, dear viewers, what did Apostle Paul warn all Church of Christ members about that could keep them from reaching maturity? Apostle Paul said, don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Now, what was Apostle Paul referring to when he spoke about culture? He said, your everyday, ordinary life, which also includes how people think, the way or the things that they want, and the way they live their lives. Now, how did Apostle Paul describe the possible dangers of the worldly culture, the beliefs, values, and way of life that surrounds the true Christians or members of the Church of Christ. He said, the culture around you always dragging you down to its level of immaturity. And that should not be the condition of the members of the Church of Christ. So there must be a clear distinction between Church of Christ members and the people of the world in the way of thinking and living. That's why not everything true Christians observe in the people around them in school or at work or see on television or read on the internet should be accepted as normal or good. Since Church of Christ members follow the Christian culture, God's commandments and not the faulty human opinions of people who do not belong to God form the basis of our way of life, attitudes, values, and beliefs. Now, what exerts a strong influence today on people's behaviors and beliefs, which all Christians should be careful of? Now, let me read from a pamphlet I retrieved online concerning social media's influence on people's culture and values. This article is written by Roberta Leggett and Stephanie Uberal. It's called Social Media Impacts, Behavior, Norms, and here's a part of what it says here on page 7, we are going to read. As such, an online social group is powerful at changing its members' views on certain topics, thus reinforcing certain norms and behaviors within their group. Such a situation becomes problematic when agreement-focused groups adhere to social norms around harmful behavior. Now, our dear viewers, based on this pamphlet that we have read, those who study behavioral science say an online social group is powerful at changing its members' view on certain topics, thus reinforcing certain norms and behaviors within their group. When can the behaviors and beliefs adapted from online and social groups cause serious problems? The same researcher said, when agreement-focused groups adhere to social norms around harmful behavior. Now, according to the authors of that study, who among social media users are the most susceptible to adapting such harmful changes? Now, this is what they say this time here in page 3 of Social Media Impacts Behavior Norms. The need for popularity also increases self-interest behaviors, which makes it more difficult to take others' feelings and perspectives into account. Moreover, these users often feel additional social media anxiety, which pressures them to behave in a way that garners likes, 
which can lead to the spreading of harmful content online when it is reinforced. This is even more impactful for teens, where 39% report feeling pressured to only post content that they believe will get them lots of comments or likes. Now, according to behavioral science researchers, the need for popularity and feeling of social media anxiety can pressure people to behave in a way that garners likes, which can lead them to doing what is harmful. Youth, especially teens, are the most susceptible to these dangers. Now, this is the reason the church administration in the Church of Christ wants all of us who are members to be aware of the harms and dangers of misusing social media. So what harmful beliefs and behaviors should true Christians avoid because they lead people away from salvation? Now, what we are going to read is written here in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 11. Listen to the testimony of Apostle Paul. Do you not know that sinful men will have no place in the holy nation of God? Do not be fooled. A person who does sex sins, or who worships false gods, or who is not faithful in marriage, or men who act like women, or people who do sex sins with their own sex, will have no place in the holy nation of God. Also those who steal, or those who always want to get more of everything, or who get drunk, or who say bad things about others, or take things that are not theirs, will have no place in the holy nation of God. Some of you were like that, but now your sins were washed away. You were set apart for God like living to do His work. You were made right with God through our Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of our God. Now, dear viewers and our beloved brethren, what are some of the harmful beliefs and behaviors that true Christians should avoid because they lead people away from salvation? Apostle Paul's testimony is clear. A person who does sex sins or who is not faithful in marriage or men who act like women or people who do sex sins with their own sex or those who always want to get more of everything or who get drunk or who say bad things about others will have no place in the holy nation of God. These are not our words, dear viewers. We are just reading what is written in the Bible. This is why all Church of Christ members are exhorted to remember that they are Christians even when they are online. So just as true Christians should stay away from all sexual immoralities or sins, drunkenness, greed, slander, they should also not post such things online or even share or like such posts. Since the Bible teaches that slander is wrong, it also teaches that true Christians should have proper respect for our spiritual leaders. We are taught that social media should not be used for venting complaints when one is being disciplined. In the first place, we should never resent such discipline. Discipline is a sign of love and concern. That's why problems are not aired on social media, but instead brought to the attention of the church administration for spiritual guidance in fixing them. If what celebrities or social media influencers say goes against the Bible-based teachings in the Church of Christ, then no matter how popular those people are or how woke or enlightened they claim to be, what they say is still false and based on mere human opinion that lead people away from God. On Judgment Day, such people cannot save themselves, let alone save others by their opinion. So what did the apostles advise the members of the true Church of Christ to safeguard their divine election so that they will not be harmed by the things of this world? What we are going to read is written here in 1 Corinthians 
723.31 and 35 as retrieved from ebible.org, a translation for translators. This is what we could read. Christ paid a price to buy you when he died for you. So do not act as if you are evil people's slaves by doing the evil things that they tell you to do. Because this world, as it exists now, will soon be gone. Those who are actively involved in the affairs of this life should not devote all their time to be involved in those things. I am telling you this for your own good. I am not saying it in order to restrict you. Instead, I am saying it in order that you may do what is proper and be able to serve the Lord without being distracted. Now, we hope you notice, our beloved viewers, the instruction of Apostle Paul to the true Christians or the members of the Church of Christ. He said that the true Christians should not act as if they are evil people's slaves by doing the evil things that they tell them to do. And what was the apostle's instruction about using things of this world? Apostle Paul said they should not devote all their time to be involved in those things. So even though we members of the Church of Christ use things of this world, just like social media, we do it with discipline and self-control. Now, what is the purpose of those who administered the early church then and the church administration today in giving such guidelines? According to Apostle Paul, it is so that true Christians may do what is proper and to be able to serve the Lord without being distracted. Now, why did the apostles not want the things of this world to distract Church of Christ members? It is so that Church of Christ members will no longer be like children. And that is what we can read here in Ephesians 4 and 14. Then we will no longer be like children, forever changing our minds about what we believe because someone has told us something different or has cleverly lied to us and made the lie sound like the truth. Apostle Paul said, then we will no longer be like children, forever changing our minds about what we believe because someone has told us something different. Now, what did the apostles remind the true Church of Christ members if they come across anything or anyone saying religious or moral beliefs that are different from what they have learned inside the body of Christ? Such people are only making their lies sound like the truth. That is why members of the Church of Christ understand that those who readily accept such false beliefs are spiritually immature and are straying away from the Lord God. So how can members of the Church of Christ continue to be mature spiritually and become worthy of receiving salvation? The Apostle Paul will provide us once again the answer here in 1 Thessalonians 2 and 13. And we will never stop thanking God for this, that when we preached to you, you didn't think of the words we spoke as being just our own, but you accepted what we said as the very word of God, which of course it was, and it changed your lives when you believed it. Now, our dear viewers and our beloved brethren, as one of the ministers who helped the administration of the Church of Christ in the first century, Apostle Paul said, when we preach to you, you accepted what we said as the very word of God. What is the proof that church members accepted God's message taught by the church administration as the very word of God? Apostle Paul said, it changed your lives when you believed it. That's why members of the Church of Christ understand that how we live and think, in other words, our culture should be based on what the church administration has been teaching us from the Bible, which is the very Word of God. Now, why should we trust in God's words more than human opinion?
The Apostle Paul provides us with insight concerning that. It's recorded here in 2 Corinthians 1, 9, 10. This is what we could read. Instead of trusting in our own strength or wits to get out of it, we were forced to trust God totally. Not a bad idea since He's the God who raises the dead. And He did it, rescued us from certain doom, and He'll do it again, rescuing us as many times as we need the rescuing. Now, dear viewers, why do Church of Christ members trust in the words of our Lord God over mere human opinions? Because as Apostle Paul said, He's the God who raises the dead. No one on social media can raise the dead and bring people to salvation. No amount of likes or followers one gets on social media can bring him to salvation. Instead of turning to social media for comfort, acceptance, or hope for the future, God's people turn to God who is ready to rescue us as many times as we need rescuing. Now, what do God's people plead with Him so that they won't be led away from spiritual maturity and salvation by the evil influences of this world? It is to never forget His precepts. And we can read that here in Psalms 119, 141, 142, and 147. I'm insignificant and unpopular, but I don't forget your precepts. Your justice is eternal, and your instructions are perfectly true. As pressure and stress bear down on me, I find joy in your commands. Your laws are always right. Help me to understand them so I may live. I pray with all my heart. Answer me, Lord. I will obey your decrees. I cry out to you, rescue me, that I may obey your laws. I rise early before the sun is up. I cry out for help and put my hope in your words now for true servants of the lord god even if holding on to god's teachings make them unpopular this will never shake them from obeying the will of god no matter how trending wrong beliefs may be we know that the instructions of our almighty god are always right and perfectly true therefore to the members of the Church of Christ, we must pray to the Lord God with all our heart and ask for His help and ask Him to help us to understand His laws and commandments. We also fulfill the biblical injunction concerning uniting completely with the church administration whom the Lord God entrusted to make his laws fully known. We remember what the servant of our Lord God said, as pressure and stress bear down on me, I find joy in your commands. Rescue me that I may obey your laws. So let us not be overcome by pressure, whether those caused by pandemic or peer pressure online. If we feel our life is stressful and we feel lonely or depressed, just like what this servant of the Lord God did, let us also cry out to the Lord God to rescue us and help us. We can put our hope in His words and promises since He has called us into the Church of Christ to be considered as His sons and daughters in these last days. And to the members of the Church of Christ, we continue to exhort our brethren, each and every one of you, that in this time of great difficulty and crisis, 
may we all continue to unite with our executive minister, Brother Eduardo V. Manalo, as he leads the entire church to continue striving for spiritual maturity for us to be worthy of receiving salvation. May none be dragged down by the false beliefs and evil practices of this world that will soon pass away. May none lose hope for God's help and guidance in the midst of stress and pressure. Instead, may the fire of the Holy Spirit continue working in all of us to obey completely the will of the one true God until the day His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, returns to bring all the true members of the Church of Christ into our Father's heavenly kingdom. And before we end our discussion, dear viewers and beloved brethren, we invite you to join us in a short prayer. Our most merciful, kind, and loving Father in heaven, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts, dear Father, for once again, we have received your holy words, reminding us how to become true Christians, how to be mature in the faith, so that we will be certain of receiving the promised salvation. May all of the guidelines that we have received be followed by each member of the Church of Christ so that we will receive the promised salvation. And we also pray for our fellow men who are not yet members in the Church. May our good acts serve as a good example to them so that they too will be enlightened about the truth and we will be able to make them join the Church of Christ. And through your words, dear Father, may you enlighten their hearts and their minds and may they have that firm decision to become members of the true Church of Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ, you are our Savior. May you continue to safeguard the Church of Christ, especially now that we are undergoing extraordinary trials. May you continue to protect your servants, and may we continue our services to you and the Father in heaven. Dear Father, as we return to you in prayer, may you continue to take good care of the Church administration, who also takes good care of our faith, so that all of us will be brought to maturity and to be certain of receiving salvation. We are firm in our faith that you heard our prayer. We ask all of these in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.